right, so we located spleen 11, and now we're doing spleen 12. Spleen 12 is where the leg meets the torso right here. This is the inguinal ligament here. Uh, ASIS bone right here. Can you look at your pubic bone, please? That's the pubic bone. So ASIS is here, and what we're looking for is the femoral artery. So we have to palpate for that, and it's best to have the leg flat, not bolstered. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my hand and being aware to keep my fingers together, not like this, right, together, because we wanna be aware of the patient's groin. And I'm gonna feel for the artery. If I don't feel it, I'm just gonna go a little bit medial. Okay, and I feel it right here. So we have the femoral vein, the femoral artery, and the femoral nerve. And what we're feeling for is the artery. It's the palpable pulse here. And so I would place my needle right next to that here. So spleen 10 is above the knee, 11 is mid-thigh, spleen 12 is here. Now spleen 13, we're just going to go 0.7 up and 0.5 lateral. There's really no way to use a tsunometer here, so I just double check my patient's uh, sun measurements, okay, and I'm going to go 0.7 la up, wait, let's see, 0.7 up, 0.5 lateral, yes. So from here, I'm just going to try to estimate 0.7 up and 0.5 lateral. So another way to locate spleen 13, which probably would be more accurate, is to locate spleen 15 first. So the way that we get the rectus abdominis to come up on the abdomen, the easy way, is just to have the patient lift their head a little bit. So just lift your head. It engages the muscle just enough where you can palpate. Here's the edge, you can relax. Here's the edge of the rectus abdominis. So on stomach points, we can have them lift their head, but we'll locate those starting about here at two sun lateral to the midline, which we can measure as half the distance from the edge of the rectus abdominis to the umbilicus, or from the midline to the edge. It's easiest to palpate down here. The rectus abdominis comes up here. It's the muscle that makes the six pack, which we all have. It's just hidden for some of us. So this is spleen 15, and I can locate spleen 13 for 0.3 sun inferior um, to spleen 15. So can you look at your pubic bone again, please? Okay, so I wanna find the top of the pubic bone and how many sun from here to here? Five, okay. So that's five, I'm gonna bring it over. 4.3 puts me right about there. Okay, which is a little different than measuring from here, but it does put me inside the abdomen, which is where I want to be. So right here is spleen 13. Then we have spleen 14, which is 1.3 sun inferior to spleen 15. I'll go ahead and mark spleen 15 so that we can easily see it. So level with the umbilicus and four sun lateral to the midline. And again, you just have the patient raise their head a little bit. You can find the edge of the rectus abdominis, which is right here, and level with the umbilicus. Okay, so how do I find uh, 1.3 sun inferior to spleen 15 with, with precision? I'm going to locate the pubic bone, okay, which is here. And the distance from the umbilicus to the pubic bone is five sun. It's at that level, in line, spleen 12, we locate by palpating for the artery. We put the needle just lateral to the artery. If we go too far lateral, the femoral nerve is there, so be very careful. Spleen 13 is located just above and lateral. I prefer to locate it as uh, distal or inferior to spleen 15 because then it, makes, it ensures that I'm within the abdomen 
more accuracy. And then spleen 14 is just under 15. It's best to use 15 as your guide and then go from there. So what we can do is from here, just go ahead and raise your head please. You can feel the abdomen engage. You can feel the edge of the rectus abdominis here. So the distance from here to here is four sun. It doesn't look the same on everybody. So you have to go by each person. And then halfway, what point would this be? Stomach 25. Okay, so spleen 15, foresun lateral to the umbilicus, and you locate that not with a sunometer, but by palpation of the rectus abdominis muscle. And spleen 16 is located three sun superior to spleen 15. So how can we measure that one? We measure from the umbilicus to the sternocostal angle. And how many sun is that? eight sun. So I want to measure three sun up from here, so I like to put my zero at the umbilicus. So I put my zero here, I find the sternocostal angle, and that's where the ribs meet the sternum without the xiphoid process. Eight sun, and then I find three sun is at this level, and I go up here and across. Okay, so that is spleen 16. So for some people it lands right on the ribs, on this body model it's just inside the ribs. And if it does land on the ribs, you can just change your needling technique or just move slightly off the ribs for needling. Okay, spleen 17, uh, fifth intercostal space, sixth sun lateral to the midline. So here's the twelfth rib, that's the eleventh intercostal space, tenth, ninth, Eighth, seventh, sixth, fifth. So fifth intercostal space, sixth sun lateral to the midline is going to put us on a lateral breath, lateral breast. And from the midline to the edge of the shoulder bone is eight sun. So we can estimate that it's going to be, relax your shoulder please, lung one is six sun lateral to the midline so we can come straight down and locate the point right here okay so 17 and then we locate 20 and 20 is in the second intercostal space six sun lateral to the midline so we find the clavicle the first rib is just below it from here. This is the sternum. Feel the first bump, first intercostal space, second, and then we can follow that over to six sun lateral to the midline. Here. That's spleen 20. Now lung 1 is just above this. Lung 1, lung 2. Lung 1, lung 2. So they're only about one soon apart. And then we have 17. And we just, because we can't always palpate this, we're just going to estimate the distance. So. We can use two fingers and just separate that equal distance. So this will be 18, 19, 20. And I'll show you a way that if you had to needle this on someone who really needed treatment for uh, one side of their chest or one side of the breast, I'll show you that in just a minute. So then we have spleen 21. Spleen 21, we find the very center of the armpit and come straight down to the 6th or 7th intercostal space, which really is exactly the bottom of the chest. So for women, the bra line goes just under the pectoralis muscles. 
And so that's the bottom of the chest there. It wouldn't come straight across there. So for men, there's no bra line to, to rely on. So you just go to the bottom of the chest, which is where the pectoralis muscles meet the ribs down here. Pectoralis comes along here, up here, and a little bit here. It's a very, very large muscle. And so we come straight down to this level. And when you're feeling the intercostal spaces, you can use tenderness in this case to determine which one. So where you find the bottom of the chest, you can ask the patient, is there a tender spot here? Mm -hmm. Something that's more tender. Our patient says yes. Okay. So let's do a quick review. Spleen 12 and 13. Spleen 14, 15, 16, 17 is here on the lateral chest. We locate 20 and then between 17 and 20 equal distance apart we find 18 and 19. And then to find between 21, we go straight down from the bra line. I'm sorry, straight down from the, we go straight down from the axilla along the side to where the pectoralis muscle meets the ribs, which for women is the bra line, and for men is the bottom of the chest. We would just call it that way. And it's the sixth or seventh intercostal space. So if you have a patient that you need to needle these points, because the functions of the points on the side here, we do have alternates that are a little easier to get to. Uh, so if you're working on a woman who has a large chest or it's just difficult to palpate for the points, you could have alternate points that you could use. But if you had somebody who maybe had a surgery to their chest, their breast, whether it's reduction or augmentation, and it's come to a point where acupuncture is appropriate, you may want to lay them on their side so you can access these points a little bit better. And so when, when the patient, when the body model was supine, um, you know, we located uh, spleen 17 in this area and spleen 20 here, it may be a little different because the surface and the structures underneath move a little when we reposition someone. So I'll relocate those. Fourth, so this would be 18. Fifth. And sixth. So that is in the right spot. So, but if we do equal distance, we still get very close. So 17, 18, 19, and 20. And reasons that we might needle directly for the breast, mastitis, um, maybe some kind of uh, inflammation or other issues other than mastitis with breastfeeding, um, a surgery such as an augmentation or reduction, of course you'd want to wait until they're at a certain point for that, uh, or if there was an injury to the chest then that might be calls for um, using the points on the side, definitely wanting to use those. And you could position your patient on the side for those so that they, you get better access to that area and proper needling. And it allows the tissue to go medially and makes it easier for you to access those points.